there, my name is Karin and today I want to show you techniques from my uh, So Simple Pinwheels book. This is a book that uh, started because I was playing around with a block and I thought, gosh, there's so many variations here, but what is the simplest way in which I can do this block? So the pinwheel block has four blades and I'm going to show you how I work this particular block. Here we have the block, the finished block, four different blades that look as if they're spinning around. And we also, in this particular block, have four corner units too. I particularly love this block because again, there's no wastage of fabric. What you cut and sew, you use again. So let me show you how it works. I start off with two squares. This is the square that's going to be the main blades and this is going to be the background square. What I do with this is on the wrong side of the light square, I draw a line and you can just see the line diagonally from corner to corner. I then stitch quarter of an inch away from the line on both sides. So I would stitch along here, turn the block around and stitch along here. So we have two seam lines quarter of an inch away from that center line. Now many of you will know this particular technique. Here we have the half square triangle unit stitched. The center line um, is from corner to corner and then we stitch quarter of an inch away on both sides of the center line. Now we cut along that center line so that the stitching is on each side and what we get is the half square triangle unit. So here is a half square triangle unit. If I position this on here you can see it's just half of this unit. Now when I press this I like to press it away from the light fabric towards the dark fabric. Here is one I have finished earlier. It's pressed towards the dark and the ears have been trimmed away. The next thing we do is to take a ruler and you just need to check that this square is actually four and a half inches. So we're now going to place this ruler two and a quarter inches away from one edge. So the edge will be here and it is important that you position this correctly so that every single one of the units you're cutting is positioned the same way. In other words, the dark triangle on this side of you, the light triangle away. So we're going to pretend that we've actually cut this in half, two and a quarter inches. And the units I then create are these units here. So can you see how they relate to the half square triangle, they're cut and pulled apart. Now this is where it gets exciting because what we can do is one of several things. We can turn this unit around and stitch it and can you see now that it forms one quarter of this block. You can also remove this and have a totally plain unit of sky here. And I'm going to show you some blocks later where this has been done. So let's go ahead and just stitch these two together. So just to take you through this once more, this was a half square triangle unit. It is cut in half. And then this is flipped around to create a new corner. So we have the blade unit here and the corner unit here. And this would become quarter of this block. This is stitched together. And here we have the unit stitched together. Now, unfortunately, at this stage, this is creating a rectangle and we need squares to fit into a square block. So what we have to do next is to turn this unit around, measure the unit. The unit is going to be four inches. So we need to measure four inches from this side and remove the excess half inch. This will then create a nice square. So here we have the orig original rectangle and here we have the half inch removed. 
so it, it forms the square. Now once you've done that, you stitch four of these together and you can see that this forms one of the corners of this particular block. Would you like to see some of the quilts that I've made with this? <laughs> I'd like to show you a lighter coloured block. This is uh, made from a range of fabrics called Dockwood Trail and it's a very light block but you can see the blades here and the corners here. So I'm now going to show you the quilt that was made from this. Okay. I like to make quilts this sort of size for my book because this size quilt would make a lovely cot quilt or a wall hanging. If you put two of these together and uh, did some extra borders around, it would make a twin size quilt. If you put four of them together and did borders around, it would make a double size quilt. So the project for this quilt is in the Pinwheels book and it's one that I really enjoyed making. Now for another quilt. Here we have a table runner and it's made with uh, twin blocks of pinwheels put side by side and then the length that you wanted the table runner to be made. Again we have the corners so there's no corners wasted. Now here we have another table runner. If I position it this way you'll probably see it a little bit better. And this time the block is put on point and the corners have been removed and a plain piece of fabric put in, a piece of rectangle, just the same size as that corner block would be. And this gives a totally different effect again. Now I'm really proud of the next quilt I'm going to show you. In 2012, that was a year of London. We had the Queen's Jubilee and we had the Olympics in London and I wanted to make a quilt that would commemorate that. It was also the year that my So Simple Pinwheels came out, so it seemed appropriate to do that. Again, I've used a panel in the centre. Sometimes fabrics are just too good to cut and you want to position them to show them off rather than cutting them up. So this is a panel which depicts Things that you see in London, such as the cabs, the taxis, the street signs, the post boxes, etc. Now around the edge, I put some pinwheel blocks. And what I've done here is use the commemorative fabric from that year, Union Jacks, and you can see the blades of the pinwheels here. But I removed the corners and created a different pinwheel here. So the corners from the blocks had a plain piece of fabric inserted and then the leftover pieces were used for the smaller pinwheels. And all this is in my So Simple book, so do have a read of that and see what you think and you're going to come up with your own designs which would be equally beautiful. By the way, the back of this quilt was a fun fabric which shows the tube lines in England. In London, I should say, not in England. I wouldn't follow this map uh, if you're a tourist in London because it doesn't quite equate to the tube maps as they really are. The quilt behind me, the front cover quilt, has an additional extra to the pinwheel block. We have inserted something in the centre here which uh, gives it more of a spinning effect. So I've inserted a contrasting fabric into the pinwheel and I'm just going to show you how this is done. The block here shows it more clearly. We have the traditional pinwheel block that I explained earlier but here we've added an extra piece, a little corner piece to create that spinning motion. So if I take this corner piece here and I take a small square of fabric what I have done is drawn a diagonal line from corner to corner and then I simply place it in the corner of the blade just as it would be here. I pin it and I stitch it and once it's stitched all I have to do is remove the excess side and flip this over and this creates the center of the block and you would do this obviously before you stitched all four pieces together. 